I would now like to proceed and announce certain additional measures. As you would be aware, we announced several measures as a part of the MPC statement, and a number of these measures have very far-reaching consequences, and they make a lot of impact on our overall uh, financial uh, inclusion, on our financial, uh, you know, on depending of uh, credit, on uh, the spread of UPI, and on other aspects of the economy. So we have a few measures. I request your continued patience. The first announcement relates to review of regulatory framework for financial benchmark administrators. It has been decided to revise the extant regulations issued in June 2019 and put in place a comprehensive risk-based framework for administration of financial benchmarks. This will cover all benchmarks related to foreign exchange, interest rates, money markets, and government securities. The revised directions will provide greater assurance about the accuracy and integrity of the financial benchmarks. The next announcement relates to review of regulatory framework for infrastructure debt fund NBFCs, that is IDF NBFCs. At present, infrastructure debt funds provide refinancing facilities for lenders in the infrastructure sector. The extant regulatory framework for IDFs has been revised. The key changes in the revised framework are, one, withdrawal of the requirement to have a sponsor for the IDFs, two, allowing IDFs to finance toll operator, toll operate transfer, that is TOT projects as direct lenders, three, permitting IDFs to raise funds through ECBs, and four, making tripartite agreements optional for PPP projects. These changes are expected to further augment the capacity for infrastructure financing in the country. Greater, the next announcement relates to greater transparency in interest rate reset of equated monthly installments based floating rate loans. Now, let me just read it again. I think that was too long. It basically, the next announcement relates to bringing in greater transparency in interest rate reset of EMI installment based floating interest loans. It is proposed to put in place a transparent framework for reset of interest rates on floating interest loans. The framework will require regulated entities to, again, there are various components, the the, it will require the regulated entities to, number one, clearly communicate with borrowers for resetting the tenor and or the EMI. Number two, provide options for switching to fixed rate loans or foreclosure of loans. Three, disclose various charges incidental to the exercise of the options. And four, ensure proper communication of key information to the borrowers. These measures will further strengthen consumer protection. The next announcement relates to consolidation and harmonization of instructions for supervisory data submission. The Reserve Bank has, from time to time, issued several guidelines on submission of supervisory returns by the supervised entities. It has been decided to consolidate and harmonize such guidelines into a single master direction to reduce compliance burden and to promote greater ease of doing business for supervised entities. And uh, the next announcement, actually there are three announcements within this announcement, and it relates to UPI. And basically the announcements are related to in, you know, bringing in conversational payments and offline capacity on the UPI, enhancement in transaction limit of small value offline digital payments. The details are as follows. With the objective of harnessing new technologies for enhancing the digital payments experience for users, it is proposed to, number one, enable conversational payments on UPI, which will enable the users to engage in conversation with artificial intelligence-powered systems to make payments. 
Number two, introduce offline payments on UPI using near field communication technology through UPI Lite on through UPI Lite on device wallet. And number three, enhance the transaction limit for small value digital payments in offline mode from rupees 200 to rupees 500 within the overall limit of rupees 2000 per payment instrument. These initiatives will further deepen, deepen the reach and use of digital payments in the country. And uh, this is the final, final announcement, the next one, and it, it's really impactful. We expect this announcement going forward will have a huge impact on our credit sector. The Reserve Bank, in association with the Reserve Bank Innovation Hub, started a pilot project in September last year for frictionless credit delivery through end-to-end -end digital processes, starting with Kisan credit card loans, that is KCC loans. The pilot for KCC loans is currently operational in select districts of Madhya Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, UP, and Maharashtra. Recently, dairy loans have been included in the pilot project in select districts of Gujarat. Based on the learnings from the pilots and to expand the scope of end-to-end -end digital lending processes, a public tech platform for frictionless credit delivery, I repeat, a public tech platform for frictionless credit delivery is being developed by the Reserve Bank Innovation Hub. The platform is intended to be rolled out as a pilot project in a calibrated manner. It will have an open architecture and open application programming interface, that is API and standards, to which all financial sector players can connect seamlessly. This initiative will accelerate the penetration of credit to the hitherto un underserved regions and further deepen financial inclusion 